and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anybody, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you. These are my stones, and here is my story. Hi, y'all. Welcome back to Simple Living with Michelle Davenport. Well, we finally made it to, ser to series number three. Um, so I just wanted to welcome you here. I want to catch you up if you're just, uh, recap, if you're just joining me on the third part of this three-part series. So uh, I told my testimony, and just briefly, I was molested at 11, raped at 16, spit at, hit at, tied up, held hostage. My mom married seven times. Brother died in a car wreck after trying to sell drugs. Dad was in the biggest gang member, one of the biggest gang members in Corpus Christi, Texas. He ended up in prison. Um, I watched my mom slowly become a heroin addict after getting married to a uh, drug addict. And, but by my God's faithfulness and his grace, he brought me through all of that. And then I, the second part of the series was uh, explaining about Noah and how he built the ark and what that all entailed. So if you didn't get to see that, you might want to go see one and two uh, of the series. Uh, this is my testimony. And then you can watch this one so you won't feel lost. But anyway, a recap of, of Noah just quickly is um, after the biggest storm ever hit the entire world to date, uh, Noah had a choice. And so after he had sp a bit spent 120 years building an ark, 365 days plus in an ark, and then after he, the Lord said, come out of the ark, uh, Noah had a choice. So... He could step out of that ark and he could have started looking around and taken inventory of everything that was lost. Or he can do what he did, which he built an altar of praise. And so the Lord likened that to my life and part of my testimony. Um, for those of you that don't know, I lost my entire family and also had went through everything that I had just listed plus some. I don't have even time <laughs> to tell you my whole testimony, but it's in my book called Ripened on the Vine. And it's been written into a screenplay and being looked at um, for a movie. So, uh, just wanted to recap in case you just wanted to watch, you know, three of <laughs> our three series. But today, I just wanted to impart something to you. I just wanted to impart a seed because I had uh, ministered and uh, and and preached a message called "Pregnant with Purpose" one time, and that's really how the Lord wanted me to end this is to encourage you that you are pregnant with purpose. And in Matthew 1, there's the genealogy of Jesus. And in that genealogy, uh, five women are mentioned, which, you know, you think, well, big deal. Well, back then it was a big deal because women didn't get a mention ever. I mean, they just didn't. So for Matthew to mention five particular women in the genealogy of Jesus Christ is a huge deal. And I wanted to tell you and to show you and tell you what the Lord showed me in the genealogy of Jesus. And what he showed me is this, that each woman, each five of the women played a part in birthing Jesus into their generation, which there's 40, I believe there's 42 generations before Jesus Christ came. But every woman had a part to play. Every woman had to birth what was inside of her. And then that continued the generations and then she the next woman would birth inside of her and so forth and so on until Mary had the chance to birth what was inside of her and that's what I want to tell you today is that you have something in you that needs to birth into this generation while you're here I have something in me that needs to be birthed into this generation and you cannot let what happened to you in your past to dictate your future yeah, if, if it wants to inspire you uh, as you're walking out your forgiveness and encourage you, and if that's your platform, is your testimony, that's awesome. But if it's not, if it's become something that pulls you down, that's not helping you birth what's ever inside of you into this generation. If your past is keeping you on drugs, on alcohol, in denial, um, hostile, prideful, resentful, a chip on your shoulder, if it's causing you to be angry, uh, be discontent, um, have a, a uh, 
poor me mentality, I'm a martyr mentality, I've been through all this mentality, feel sorry for me mentality, that's not birthing Jesus into this generation. You, I, I really highly suggest you get some kind of help from your church or, you know, how, whatever God, however God leads you to get um, spiritually healed from your past because I don't believe for one minute that anyone on this planet Earth doesn't have something to birth into this generation. As, as Mary's job was to birth Jesus into our generation and all the generations to come, and every woman led up to the birth of Jesus as she did her part, I believe we have our part to do. And so I do believe that, that seeds have been planted and that you, that you have a, a purpose, that you are pregnant with purpose. Um, also, this is a, such a good point and, and it deserves a pause. It deserves a, a moment to just tep- take a step back and think about and the, what the Lord showed me in the spirit was this. Until God had Adam laying on the ground and until God pulled Eve out of Adam, Adam had no idea what was inside of him until God pulled her out. She was in him all along. Eve was inside Adam all along. But until God pulled her out, Adam had no idea. And my purpose for doing this last video on my testimony is to implore you and to encourage you and to invite you to think on a higher realm that maybe you've been thinking as that there is more in you that God hasn't pulled out yet. There's more in me that God hasn't uh, pulled out of me yet. And until I meet my maker, I pray that he continues to keep pulling out of me that what I didn't even know was in me. I mean, I've shared it many times on many different platforms that when he asked me, I was on a 21 day fast when God asked me to write my testimony, to write a book. And you think, well, no big deal. And some of you might think, yeah, big deal. But there's some of you think, okay, that's not that big of a deal. But you need to know the backdrop on that. And, and, and part of that is my testimony for sure. That's what he's going to have me write. But what you might not know is that I just made it to the beginning of 10th grade. And then my whole world fell apart. My whole world, it had been falling apart, but it had literally crumbled beneath my feet at the beginning of 10th grade. By that time, my mom was a full-blown heroin addict. By that time, she was married for several years to a man that was a drug addict and also a drug dealer. By that time, my house was known as the drug house. People were, my friends were banded from my home. They weren't allowed to come to my house. All my teenager friends, none of them. And at that time, this is when they stole my car that they gave me, took off and went on a weak drug deal and left me at home alone um, with very little resources. So at that time, I didn't go back to school. I just became the outcast. I became this girl that nobody could hang out with. I became this person that no parents wanted their child around. Not necessarily for the mistakes I I was making, but for the mistakes my parent was making. And so they were banded from the house. And so for God to tell this South Texan girl that he didn't didn't even get to finish or practically start 10th grade before it was over, for him to tell me to write a, a book was pretty outrageous to me. It did not look like something normal that God would ask somebody to do that that looked like me, that had my kind of background. But I can't, for the life of me, cannot think about anything in the Bible that looks really normal for God to have done. I mean, to feed, you know, over 5,000 people off, you know, a couple of fish and a piece of bread 
you know, a loaf of bread and then have leftovers. Well, anybody that raised children <laughs> knows, you know, you got a couple of healthy eaters in your house, you don't have leftovers at all, but they had leftovers. For a man with a withered hand, for God to say, stretch it out and you will be made whole, and he does it. For, for Jesus to put mud, mixed up a mixture of mud, of water and dirt, and put on a man's eyes, and then says, now that I've covered your blind eyes, even more so, and now you look even more blind, now you can see. For a king to go wash in a dirty river so he could be healed of leprosy did not seem normal. For a woman with an issue of blood that crawled literally through the crowd to just touch the hem of Jesus' garment and she was made whole seemed really abnormal because she was the woman with the issue of blood so she was considered defiled. And anybody that touched her or that she touched would be quarantined for days and go through a ritual of washing because they were considered unclean because she touched them or they touched her. For God to tell Dorcas to rise, get up, you're healed after she had been dead and for her to rise didn't seem normal. For Jonah to end up in the belly of a fish before he ever said his first prayer and then for the fish to spit him out on the very land where he was disobedient, well, that just didn't seem normal. For Jesus to tell the disciples to go fish after they've been fishing all night and then they didn't catch anything and he says, go out deeper and you'll catch fish. And for them to catch so many, it filled two boatfuls, almost to sinking. Well, that didn't just seem normal. And so for, for, for God to tell me to write a book after I know all these abnormal things that seem so abnormal, and so not what the world would do, only left me with this. I said, God, if you're calling me to do this, then you'll equip me to do it. And so I started to write. Because I was pregnant with purpose and the purpose to give birth to this book. And because I was obedient to give birth to the first book, God impregnated me with four more books. And I believe there's a sixth one in me. And so the reason I wanted to in this with that you're pregnant with purpose and that you've got more in you that he hasn't pulled out yet. And just because you don't think that you can do what God's calling you to do doesn't mean you can't. It just means you think you can't. And I just want to encourage you. I want to leave this series with a word of encouragement that God has had me do some pretty not normal things. But you know what the best news is? Is I got not normal results. I got outrageous results. I got faith building results. I got life changing, altering, healing results. Because I was willing to do what didn't look normal. And I want to encourage you to do what doesn't look normal. I'll end with this story. And I have truly been blessed to bring this series to you. I want to tell you. It has blessed my soul to be able to speak life into your life. And give you hope for your future. And to share just a small piece of my testimony. And how God showed me how to use it. How my horror story became, became the glory story. How I now can speak it with full confidence that it has healing power behind it. One day I was calling the insurance company for my daughter and uh, trying to get some recon uh, reconcile some stuff. 
that um, she had been in a car accident and, and I was just handling it for her. And so I called them and while I was on the phone, simply making a phone call, just a normal phone call to an insurance company. And the woman that answered said, okay, I need to check on some things. Can I put you on hold? And I said, sure. And as I'm on hold, I hear the Lord say this, Michelle, this woman's been asking me a question and I need you to tell her the answer is yes. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, okay, this absolutely does not seem normal. <laughs> and because it doesn't seem normal, I know it's you, God. Because that's how you, that's how me and you roll. That's how me and you roll. So, as I'm listening to this elevator music, and getting a little antsy, my add you, <laughs> add to it, is um, she came back on the phone and she started talking and I'm telling you, I couldn't tell you what she said until this day, I don't even know what she said. <laughs> I know I had to call her back and probably because I wasn't listening. <laughs> but after she was done telling me whatever I was calling for and whatever she needed to reveal to me and tell me and disclose, I said, ma'am, don't think I'm crazy. I can't tell you how many times I have said that in my walk with Jesus because it just doesn't seem normal what he has me do. And I said, ma'am, don't think I'm crazy, <laughs> but you have been asking the Lord something for a while now. And while I was on hold, he told me to tell you the answer is yes. Well, y'all, you could have heard a pin drop. And I could hear her voice quivering. She says, although I can't talk to you about it right now, and I can't really tell you, I wanted to tell you thank you. Oh, y'all. <laughs> My heart. I was so full of joy in that moment because I don't know what that yes meant to her. I didn't know if it was, yes, you're going to have a baby. Yes, you're going to adopt a baby. Yes, you're going to get married. Yes, your marriage is going to make it. Yes, your, your mama's going to live. Yes, I'm here. When you fall, I will catch you. Yes, I'm your God that heals you. Yes, your child is going to get off those drugs. Yes, your child will get out of rehab and, and live a productive life. Yes, you'll get that raise you've been praying for. Yes, your paperwork will go through on that house you wanted. I don't know what that yes meant to her. And I'm sure it meant a lot due to the silence but I can tell you what it meant to me. It means that God is still birthing and pulling out of me, which I did not know was in me, which is courage many times to do what he's asking me to do. But what that yes meant to me is that God is continually to use my life to be an answer to someone else's prayer. So although that yes was for her, yeah, that yes was for me too. And he's continually to use my life to be an answer to someone else's prayer. Then yes, <laughs> it never, ever looks normal. And I'm okay with that. Because sometimes I'll feed a homeless man a cheeseburger. <laughs> and then sometimes I will pray over a man dying on the side of the road. And that's okay. Because I choose to take inventory of what God chose to save when I lost my entire family. 
the inventory is, he saved me. And I will be darned if I waste my life by not being obedient, by not letting him pull out of me, which what I didn't even know was in me, by living my life without living purposely, on purpose, in pursuit of being obedient to his word, his call, his beckoning. And I want to end this series with inviting you to do the same thing in your own life. By being a witness to you and letting you know that you too are pregnant with purpose. And you are to birth into this generation something that only you have. I can't birth it for you. But you can. So dear Jesus, I just thank you for another opportunity to be before whoever chooses to watch this video. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you give them a, cert, a, a sense of urgency to start living their life where it doesn't look normal <laughs> and start doing things that you're calling them to do in the power you've called them to do it with the authority of your son Jesus' name. I'd ask that you would give them courage to step out of their comfort and step in to their purpose as you continually to pull out of each one of us what we didn't even know was in there. I thank you, Jesus, for giving us all the courage to birth Jesus into our generation. No matter what, that that would be the most important thing that we do. In your name, I pray over anyone in earshot of this message. Amen. Amen. It has been my pleasure and honor. God bless you, and I'll see you when I see you.